Whoops, we have a small problem. Arnold, don't be scared, <gasps> but you are buried alive. Just like Rodrigo Cortez. <laughs> uh, stop yelling already. Screaming increases panic, heart, and accordingly the amount of air you use. And you have a maximum of two hours of breathing in your coffin until you run out of oxygen. Arnold, your phone, you're only two meters deep. Hooray! There's one line of connection. Call your loved ones. They'll save you. But this isn't certain because for them, you're dead. They'll probably think your call is someone's stupid hmm. prank. Try to connect to the internet. Your post will be seen for sure, but only after they like a cat in a funny suit, a new post by Ariana Grande, and a funny-shaped potato. I have it. Geotag posts get 79% more engagement, and a post that says oil was found will 100% attract the attention of Donald Trump. In critical situations, a person's animal instincts wake up. Well, I expected that it would wake up in you. Arnold, when lacking oxygen, people often see hallucinations. Maybe we can Google what to do. Don't hammer a nail in your life like it's a coffin lid. Get out of your comfort zone. There's no way. Oh, kill Bill too. Do it like Uma Thurman. You need to punch a hole in the lid. Be strong in spirit. Collect all your anger like Naruto. Ooh, did it hurt? You need to somehow break the lid. Look if you have anything in your pockets. Ew, Arnold, what is that? Oh, give me a break. You won't even need them outside the coffin. Ooh, this will do. Breakthrough. Hit. It's like you're trying to escape from fascists or from the whining songs of Billie Eilish. You did it. Now you have to tamp all the dirt into the coffin to clear your way out. You have to lift your shirt so that it can be tied over your head. This is so that you don't suffocate from dirt falling on your head. Arnold. 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 Wake up. Hallucinations again. It's way easier for a person to get from out of a depth if it's equal or less than their height. Okay, Arnie, buddy. Ready? Get in. During past burials, you already learned the most important rule. You need to breathe calmly and deeply in order to conserve your oxygen. Okay, now quit being calm. We need to get the handcuffs off. It's really simple. All you need to do is break one finger on each hand so you can slip them through the cuffs. Oh, quit your belly aching, Arnie. You still got two more fingers left. Use your belt or watch to try to crack open the lid. A metal coffin has weak points all along the edges. Come on, Arnie, I was kidding. You can't break through the metal, doofus. There's two meters of earth above you, which is pressing down with a mass of almost two and a half tons. So this third burial will probably be your last. Arnie. Arnie. Arnie, where are you? Oh, you little bastard. Yes, you really are Arnie Houdini. In just the same way, Harry Houdini climbed through a secret compartment in the sidewall of the coffin and into a tunnel. And then through a hatch in the grave, he dropped down on the coffin from above and covered himself with a half meter layer of dirt. But where's the hatch, Arnie? Surprise! You didn't really think I'd let you out so easy, did you? Swim up, Arnold, before the concrete sets. Hey, the poor guy. Do you want some advice? Keep calm. The deeper you breathe, the more you spend oxygen, which you have enough for one to two hours. Try to breathe deeply and exhale slowly. This will help prolong your life, which is not needed by anyone. It's easy to break through the lid in cheap coffins. Such bad guys like you will be buried in these coffins. Remember what Peime taught you. Well, or take the brass knuckles that your friends put in the coffin and hit the center. Cover your face with clothes so that the ground does not block your airway and start ramming the ground around yourself. When the place inside the coffin is finished, try to sit down. You did. Wow, we didn't believe in you the way your parents did. Now, try to crawl upwards, wriggling like a worm. Arnold, did you get out? It's incredible. I hope that no one thinks that you're a zombie. God, Arnold, you are such a loser that we have to pay twice for your funeral. I decided to go to the morgue and say my final goodbyes to you. Oh my God, are you alive? No, you've been resurrected.
it seems that the elixir you drank worked. You are now immortal. Congratulations, Arnold. You will now be the longest living organism on Earth. Your body is now regenerating, and the term cellular senescence <laughs> is now <laughs> just a joke for you. Well, how are you going to use your immortality? Got it. You'll cross the road on red. Grope random girls. You'll also win the Kenny McCormick Lookalike Contest. That's ridiculous. You have an infinite number of years ahead of you, and you waste them on this? Arnold, you could study everything in the world, learn any martial art, and even go explore and colonize new galaxies. Arnold, how about maybe stop wasting your time? Okay, so maybe for 200 years, you're gonna binge watch every single Netflix series. I see you got a little bored. Plus, your house has started to decay, and you're still young. One of the disadvantages of immortality is that you have to outlive all your loved ones. In addition, the world around you is changing rapidly. But you will lag behind in progress, and you will feel superfluous in society. Everything that was once important to you will gradually disappear. Over time, everything will cease to please and surprise you at all, because you've already seen everything. You will become deeply depressed. Sorry, friend, but it's no use. Stop it, Arnold. You know you're immortal. Arnold, let's go watch the show. Arnold. Okay, I'll leave you alone. One fine day, which didn't portend disaster at all, Arnold got locked up in a hypermarket until the end of his days. You may ask why, and the answer is just because. I simply wanted to lock him up in a hypermarket. Here, you can eat sweets and candy bars all day long, and you can drive around the store in a cart. At your disposal are goods for recreation, sports, clothes, and even medicines. On average, there are 120,000 different products in a hypermarket that will provide you with 50 years of a carefree life. But unfortunately, without electricity, a large part of these goods are going to spoil the very next day. At room temperature, the entire ton of milk that's in the store will be gone in just 18 hours. Fresh chicken, pork, and beef will all go bad within a day. Cakes and pastries will last a little little longer, maybe 36 hours, if you're lucky. You could try to prepare. You could salt the fish and dry the bread. Then their shelf lives will be extended by years. But hey, seize the day, right Arnold? After a week, vegetables and fruits will also go bad, and you'll have to switch to cereals. But even just their preparation will deplete the limited supply of water you can drink by at least 10 years. You could try to extend that by filtering it through coal from the gardening department and then cleaning it with silver. Okay, so from now on, your usual meal is going to be canned food. Beef stew can last almost indefinitely if the packaging isn't damaged. And pickled cucumbers and tomatoes can be an additional source of water. So, the three tons of canned food that are in the store will last you for eight years. Weather doesn't justify taking a day off. What? You don't want to go to work? Then I suggest you work in bed. When NASA was studying how zero gravity impacts a person, they paid $18,000 to a volunteer to lie in a bed for 70 days. Just don't even think about getting up, Arnie. I hired a sniper who will terminate you at your very first try. You will eat, drink, and do everything else while lying down. See ya, buddy! Hey, did you get any sleep? How are you doing? I guess not so cool. It looks like you're gaining weight. All the energy that comes from the food you eat isn't going anywhere. But bed sores, that's bad. Due to high blood pressure, blood stops flowing to the skin. Hold on, old sport. Good news, Arnold. You're close to the record set by Soviet scientists, 370 days in bed. 
Yeah, you don't look so hot. Every day, you're losing 5% of your muscle mass. On top of that, your bones are also damaged. And due to your lack of mobility, your bones don't repair and they quickly start deteriorating. And paradoxically, falling asleep lying down becomes impossible. Without a shift in activity, the brain doesn't know what time of day it is or when it's time to sleep. But this does have its perks. You can watch all your favorite shows over and over again. I'll leave you here now. Enjoy the show, Arnold. Oh my god, Arnold! What did you do to yourself? I wasn't serious about the sniper. Are you in a coma? Looking at you, you'd think you're dead, but you're still alive inside. In a coma, you're unable to respond to external stimuli. Because of this, you'll be the best K-pop fan. And you'll be able to listen to the same song on repeat for years. People can be in a coma from a few days to a dozen years. Edward Obara fell into a coma at the age of 16 and spent 42 years this way. According to patients, during a coma, they feel like some kind of matter. They wandered along long and damp corridors, mazes, went through complex oh. mechanisms. The degree of a coma is determined by the Glasgow Coma Scale, where 15 points is clear consciousness and three points is brain death. Arnold, they're gonna turn off the machine! Wake up, uh -uh. and I promise no more experiments on you. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. Come on, Arnie, you can do it. Hey, when did you manage to get to the seaside? So, what's the whole beach set for anyway? Ah, is this to get Bertha's attention? Wow, it actually worked. She invited you to visit her. But, hey buddy, do you have enough money for a ticket? I have an idea. You can fly to Bertha in extra super duper economy class. And instead of the usual tablet and pillow, you're gonna need food, water, and a porta potty. Don't worry, Arnold. You're not the first one to travel like this. Reginald Reg Spears, without any money, got all the way to another continent in just three days. Nowadays, warehouses are like cities with their own laws and regulations. The probability of losing a package is reduced to a minimum. Robots work on the conveyors by reading special barcodes. This reduces the risk of human error. In 2019, China set a world delivery record with 345 million packages delivered in just one day. The worst thing that can happen to a package is that it can get detained in a port at customs. I agree, for the person inside, this ain't like staying at the Ritz. Finding yourself in a confined space under the blazing hot sun is a difficult task to endure. Arnold, hang on, little buddy, it's just a little longer now. To be precise, 23 days, 17 hours, and 45 minutes. And a person is not the most amazing thing ever delivered in a package. An entire bank was transported this way. It was dismantled and sent to another city. Welcome to Australia, Arnold. Oh no, Arnold, Arnold, don't tell me you're gonna drink from this lake. But don't worry, Arnold, if a leech gets into your digestive system, it doesn't have time to harm you it'll quickly dissolve in your stomach. But you have more than one leech inside you, buddy. You're now the face of the social program, Affordable Housing for Leeches. There are more than 500 types of leeches in the world, but only three of them are considered valuable for humans. It would take just 10 minutes for 335 leeches to suck all the blood out of you. And you, Arnold, have one thousand of them. Every second counts. To get rid of the leeches, you have to drink salt water. Sorry, Arnie, I didn't have another bottle. Drinking water from that lake was a bad idea, Arnold. Even a leech is smart compared to you. Its neurons were used for a biological computer called the leechulator. It can add prime numbers, and you can't. But don't go rushing to celebrate, Arnold. It seems you've somehow attracted the attention of 
have some really dangerous little dudes. I understand it's hard to believe, but you better not move, buddy. Arnold, let the bees bite you. Bee venom is cool. It contains many beneficial substances that can defeat even fatal diseases. But in your case, you're more likely to die from a heat stroke than from a thousand bee stings. Arnold, congratulations! You're now at the center of the most colossal war, on a scale larger than all the wars of humanity combined. Ten quadrillion ants participate in it. Have you ever even seen such a number? And what numbers have you seen? Oh. Look over there, the ants are preparing for battle. If ants became human-sized, then humanity wouldn't stand a chance. After all, even an ordinary ant would be able to lift a 16-story building and run with it on its back at a speed of 55 kilometers an hour. And here come the guests. Um, run maybe, Arnold? Oh, Arnold, coordination in space has never been your forte. Although, look, you made them run in a circle and pointed the leader at his own pheromone trail. If this happens to ants, they fall into a death trap. You created an ant swirl. The leader will now hit his troops in a circle until they all die from exhaustion. You're a hero for these guys, Arnold. They want to introduce you to the ant queen. But what is this? Oh, you've got to fight for power. Sometimes a second queen may appear in the anthill. As a result of that, the two queens hold a duel between themselves, deciding who will get to rule the anthill. After the fight, the ants determine which queen they like the best. True democracy. And then the majority destroys the minority. I take my words about democracy back. Watch out! Arnold, you're truly lucky. You managed to survive even a coup d'etat. But what is this? You're saturated with the smell of corpses, and now the ants all see you as dead. Therefore, they're going to bury you alive. Arnold was a useless schmuck. May he rest in peace. So, you're saving innocent souls, aren't you? Be careful not to get yourself into trouble. Phew! Seems like you dodged a bullet there. Or not. I'm guessing you're gonna be stuck here for a while, and you'll have to survive without any food at all. Try to imagine your Angus Barbieri, a man who didn't eat anything for over a year. Shocking doctors. He lived a normal life, going to the toilet just once every 40 days. At the end of his fast, he weighed 180 pounds, having lost 275 pounds. After 12 hours of fasting, you turn pale and weak, but a fat person feels better because they have fat tissue reserves. At this time, dizziness sets in, and an unpleasant smell comes from the mouth. Oh, Arnold, there's water here! See, Arnie, always look on the bright side of life. Fasting can serve good purposes. Gandhi fasted for three weeks in protest against the caste system in India. Christian Bale lost 66 pounds for his role in The Machinist. And medieval monks fasted to hear the voice of God. Like if you wouldn't last a single day. Unlike a person's mind, on the fourth day, the body accepts hunger as a given. During this time, a sharp loss of weight is observed, along with weakness. The body always needs food, so when it's not there, it has to use fat and muscle tissue. This releases ketones, which are extremely harmful to the body. Headaches and weakness develop, and in the worst cases, there's vomiting with gastric juice, confusion, and even death. After two weeks, you'll have a constant feeling that you're cold. Your consciousness often becomes cloudy, and you don't understand what you're doing. Oh, Arnie, here comes help. Hey, yeah, let's fly to Mars. Your friend Elon has a program for this. Everything we need is already waiting for us on the big red planet. And we fly immediately while the window between Earth and Mars is still open. You ready? Okay, then. 
Fasten your seatbelts and three, two, one, go! Although it's a really long flight, I promise you won't get bored. It's a meteor cluster, Arnie. Look out! They can damage the shuttle! Quickly, get to the cargo hold. It's the only place that can protect you. By the way, we're in a closed, sealed, unventilated area, and there's not much oxygen left, so try to save it. Perhaps, for the first time in a long time, you're truly lucky, Arnold. But alas, with you, it's all in vain. Legumes contain a lot of sucrose, which isn't digested in our stomachs. The most harmful types of sucrose lead to bloating. They're called raffinose, stachyose, and verbiscose. When they enter your intestines, bacteria begin to produce huge amounts of gas. So now you have to breathe your own farts. Serves you right, you moron. Come on, it's not so bad, Arnie. Breathe your fart. Reaction with hydrogen sulfide can prevent mitochondrial cell damage. That makes it possible to prevent the development of diseases such as arthritis, heart disease, and even stroke. So breathe deeply, Arnold. It's actually healthy. Well, I really didn't think you'd make it this far, buddy, but you're doing great, really. Hey, buddy, I thought I'd do something nice. I saved a soup for you. Nice. Skip it about the air Speeds on Mars can reach up to 100 meters a second. That's fast. Finally, some decent food. Open it quick. Let's see what's inside. Beans. Beans again. And again. And what's that there? What does it say? Hello, champion. I hope you have enough of this supply of healthy and very nutritious beans to wait until the next ship arrives. We'll send it when Mars and Earth next pass as close as possible to each other in about two years. Good luck! <laughs> Good news! Part of humanity will survive. The only question is, for how long? Canned food is a great choice. Yeah, that last can was one too many. But what do you think, Arnold? How long will you last without plants? In Svalbard, an international seed vault has been built. It contains more than 900,000 seeds, but can hold up to 2 billion. That's enough to revive all the flora of the Earth. Or at least it'll provide something to eat during long nuclear winter nights. You're pretty well set up, buddy. Chips, water, plants, canned food, medicine, even a computer. <laughs> But it seems that you've forgotten the most important thing. One nuclear explosion on average will release 50 tons of dust into the atmosphere. The dust from the explosion of all nuclear weapons on Earth could cover 50 to 85 percent of the Earth's sky. Right in front of you is the new generation of the DeLorean! I've upgraded this Tesla so you can now travel not only to another city, but also to another year. 1986, for example. It worked! We're at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant just a few minutes before the disaster. Arnold, bring the camera. You're gonna shoot the explosion on it, and I'll post the video on YouTube. I'd say at least 20 million views are guaranteed. Hmm, is the battery already dead? Put it on charge. It's a European outlet, doof knuckle. You need an adapter. Or I guess not already. So, it's all because of you. It doesn't matter. You need to get out of here fast. There's a power bank in the glove box. Plug it into the car. Damn it, it takes at least 60 seconds to charge. Get out the protective suit. Just by looking at the area, you'd never know that you're in a radiation zone. But in fact, the radiation here is cosmic. That's not quite what I expected. Maybe you swapped bags with someone. 
With radiation above 500 rentgens, your hair and nails fall out instantly, your skin turns red, and all those diseases you've got get worse. But you're lucky, Arnold. You won't feel much pain because you'll fall into a coma in three, two, oh, you're already out. This is due to the fact that the radiation here is 20,000 rentgens per hour, and this technology can't handle that onslaught. The battery should be enough to get you back to the year 2020. Go! What a trip that turned out to be. Hmm. I think you may need a visit to the oncologist. Arnold, do you know just how nincompoopian you look right now? I wonder who took your protective suit. Hmm. Arnold, are you getting married? The world was consumed by a new epidemic. The infected have spots on their skin. A terrible rash covers their entire face. They cough continuously and their front teeth fall out. And in order not to be isolated, people are inoculating en masse by buying the vaccine on the black market, deliberately putting themselves at risk as the vaccine has not yet been approved. But they do this so they can return to normal life as soon as possible. Arnold, what are you doing here? Oh, are you on a date? That's cool, but you sure could find a place more romantic than this cafe on the outskirts of the city. Here she is. Wow, what did you tell her to get her to come on a date with you? Uh-oh, how did so many zombies get in here? Arnold, it seems that Susie is in trouble. An average zombie, it has green skin and smells like my grandmother's feet. At first glance, it may seem that this is just your ordinary gamer who hasn't eaten for three days. But no, zombies have their own diet. Usually, these cute creatures eat human brains. Arnold, what are you gonna do? Wow, no. That's what I call a gun. Who is that? Wow, no way. That's Chuck freaking Norris. And he's got an entire arsenal here. Now he's gonna kick some butt. Yikes, this is kind of brutal even by my low standards, but very cool. Blimey, how many zombies are there? Looks like this big guy is the only one left. You call that a punch? This is a punch. Your date seems to have been canceled due to the unforeseen zombie attack. Arnold, don't forget about Susie. Crikey, are they immortal? Chuck, hit the gas. Huh, that went pretty okay. Oh no. Look, Arnie, you and Susie have something in common. Just like you, she loses her fingers. Hmm, it seems she's getting worse. Quick, do something. You guys gotta save her. So this is the guy can help us. Who the heck is he anyway? Grigory Rasputin, the most mysterious person of the 20th century. He's credited with hypnotic abilities and an extraordinary gift of healing. What a creepy place. Even worse than that cafe you invited Susie to, Arnold. What are we doing here? Where are we going? This is how I imagine the dentist office. 100% dreadful. Hey, can we maybe stop before it's too late? Here, everything is in the best traditions of Russian celebrations. Vodka, balalaika, bears, and dancing till morning. And here's the guy we need, Grigory Rasputin. This here's the big guy. It seems our healer has drunk an 80 proof potion. Looks like you're gonna have to figure things out on your own. You don't need to worry about him. Everyone is talking about the new vaccine. Many have already tried it out on themselves, but it turns out it has a side effect. People turn into zombies. This Rasputin guy turned out to be a real you necromancer. He took advantage of the situation and invented a vaccine that destroys the virus, but turns the living into zombies. Even Chuck is shocked. Chuck, your turn. Gosh darn it, how does he do it? He's even cooler than in Walker, Texas Ranger. So that's who Van Damme took lessons from. 
Ooh, here comes Daddy. This big guy is not going to be taken down so easily. Army, you're the only one left. Army, you are a warrior. Remember all the things I taught you. And most importantly, remember, there is no enemy but yourself. Arnold, are you? I knew it. Goodbye, Arnold. You were a nice guy. Ooh, now I see. What a twist. Arnold, I congratulate you. Now that you're finally getting married, though to a zombie, although you're a zombie yourself, but what's the difference? Even zombies can love too.